Hello everyone. Welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. Myself Muhammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become an IT pro really fast. So the topic of today's video is object oriented programming versus functional programming explain. So without any further ado, let's get started. There are about 700 programming languages which also includes the esoteric programming languages. According to some sources, the notable programming languages count up to 245. And there is another source which has included every programming language which ever existed in the list. And the number went up to 8945. That shows how much variety and choice we have while going for a programming language. Just like programming language, we have many styles of programming. Like we have modular programming, functional programming, object oriented programming and sequential programming etc. In today's video, I will talk to you about object oriented programming versus functional programming. So first of all, let's understand what object oriented programming and functional programming are. Object Oriented Programming which is also known as OOP. It is a programming technique or you can say a methodology in which we make our programs with the help of objects and classes. In a class, it is like a blueprint in which we create different objects. Objects are used to represent things and those objects can be data structures. In those objects, we have different attributes to hold the data. And each object has some functions as well. Functions are like the work which object performs. To better understand it, let's have an example. Let's say we have a car and it is like an object. Now that object will contain all of its attributes. Like we have car's color, model, number of seats, number of doors, price, etc. So in terms of function, a car can move stop, carry people, etc. So we will take these things like functions. The main thing which is associated with object oriented programming is its ability to encapsulate the data from outsiders. Encapsulation is a concept in which we hide the variables of a class from outside access and no one can access those variables from outside the class directly and because of that we get to achieve security for our programs. With the help of object oriented programming, it is very easy to implement real world scenarios and with the help of it, it is easier now to translate real world problems into code. And as this programming technique or method is based on objects, changes can be made easily. Which means if you have something related to requirements that get changed, you do not need to change the whole program or system and that is the beauty of object oriented programming. So that was all about object oriented programming and now let's talk about functional programming. Functional programming is a type of programming in which we are more concerned with functions. In other words, functional programming is the process of making software with the help of functions. As we had objects in object oriented programming, in functional programming we have functions. Functional programming is a programming paradigm in which we use functions rather than statements. In those functions, we give inputs and we get consistent output in return. And by consistent, we mean whatever the state of the program is, we will continue to get the same output because function will continue to perform in the same way. Let's say we have a function of addition. So whatever the input you will give to that function, it will give you the output of sum. So whatever the state of your program or your system is, it doesn't affect the performance or functionality of your function. It will continue to perform and give the output in the same way as it was doing earlier. Now. Let's talk about the differences between object-oriented programming and functional programming. 
I will take some features or you can say some concepts and on the basis of those I will differentiate both these programming techniques. First one is learning. Object oriented programming can be a bit complex to learn as we have a lot of things like objects, functions, function calls, parameters, parameter handling, protocols, inheritance, encapsulation, etc. And because of that, we have to take care of a lot of things. However, all these things make it really powerful but at the same time a bit harder and complex to learn as well. If we talk about learning in terms of functional programming, it is simpler to learn than the object oriented programming as we do not have to care about complex data handling and as we give input to our functions and we get the output, we also do not have to do in-depth manipulation and that is why functional programming is easier to learn. Now let's talk about in terms of programming model. Object oriented programming follows the imperative programming model in which we use the statements to change the state of the program. As I have talked earlier in detail about the objects, we use an object to manipulate the data and change the state of our program. That is why object oriented programming follows the imperative approach. On the other hand, functional programming follows the declarative approach. It is more concerned with expressing the logic and giving the output without concerning about how things are taking place. We just pass the inputs to it and we get the output from it. So in object oriented programming, it is concerned with how and functional programming is concerned with what. The next concept or the next feature is data. If we talk about the object oriented programming, it uses mutable data. By mutable data, we mean the data which can be changed. As we use objects in object oriented programming, we can change our data with the help of our objects. That is why it uses the mutable data. In functional programming, it uses the immutable data because as we discussed earlier that it is only concerned with inputs and outputs and that is why it uses immutable data. As I have given you the example of addition, we will just give the inputs and it will give us the output of addition and that is how it uses the immutable data. The next thing is parallel programming. In object oriented programming, we do not have the support for parallel programming because it does not function like that. On the other hand, functional programming does support the parallel programming paradigm. By parallel programming, we mean to have two people working simultaneously on a single program. And as we have functions in it and we use the immutable data in it, that is why we can have parallel programming in it. Now let's talk about in terms of execution model. In object oriented programming, the statements of our program should be executed in a particular order. In functional programming, we can execute the statements in any order as we have functions in it and those functions can be independent of each other. We can execute the statements in functional programming in any order usage. We use object oriented programming when we have a lot of inputs to process, but we do not have to perform a lot of operations as we have objects in object oriented programming. So we process a lot of inputs in them, but in functional programming, it is preferred to use when we have a small number of inputs, but we want to have a lot of operations on them. Iterations. In object oriented programming, we use the loop for the iterative data. But in functional programming, we use the recursion for the iterative data. If we talk about in terms of elements, in object oriented programming, objects and methods are the primary elements around which our whole program and programming technique evolves. Means we create different methods and we create different objects of them. And with the help of these two, our whole program run. In functional programming, variables and functions are the primary elements. We pass the variables or we pass the parameters into our functions to get the output. 
Now, if we talk about in terms of implementation, object-oriented programming is easier to implement as we do not have to look to our input with a different perspective. And most importantly, in object-oriented programming, we know that how the data works and we use it to translate daily life problems into code. If we talk about functional programming, it is a bit difficult as compared to object-oriented programming because we have to take the functions for implementation and as we have talked earlier they are only concerned with what is given to those functions and what we will get as output and that is why we get limited liberty and it makes it little bit harder to implement the last thing on the base of which i am going to differentiate these two is conditional statement in object-oriented programming, we can use conditional statements like we can use the switch statements and if and else. But in functional programming, we do not have the support for conditional statements. Now the question which comes into mind is, which one of these is better? The answer to this question lies in your requirements because the main goal of any program or any programming language or any programming technique is to have a program which is free of bugs, flexible and complete of requirements. In general, we have two primary components of any program. One is the data and the other one is behaviors. By the data, we mean the stuff which a program knows and by behavior, we mean the things which a program can do with that data. As I have given you the example that we have different behavior of a car like it can move, it can stop, it can carry people. With object-oriented programming, we bring the data and the associated behavior to a single place and we call it as an object, just like a car example. An object-oriented programming claims that it makes it easier to understand how it works. But on the other hand, functional programming says that both things are different from each other and that is why they should be kept separate. In functional programming, we cannot store the data in objects and we can only transfer it with the help of functions. But in object-oriented programming, we use the objects to store the data. In object-oriented programming, we have to maintain the objects as level of inheritance keeps on increasing. And on the other hand, in functional programming, we need new objects to execute our function and it requires a lot of memory for our application to execute. So you should use the object-oriented programming when you require a fixed set of operations on your data or on your things. But as the code gets evolved and let's say you want to add new things to your code, you can do that by just adding new classes. So it shows that how powerful object-oriented programming is that you do not have to worry about anything and you just need to add new classes. In terms of functional programming, you should use it when you have fixed number of things or fixed number of data or fixed number of variables. And as the code will evolve, you just need to add new operation on those things which you already have. And you can do that by just adding new functions. To conclude this, I would say, when you are going to work across different things, object-oriented programming is an excellent approach and when you have a lot of complexity to handle, functional programming would be a good choice. And with that, we get to the end of today's video. I hope you have learned a lot of new things about object-oriented programming and functional programming. And if that is the case, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon along with it. If you have something to ask, please leave a comment below. We will get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, take care.